Converting an old Daypole Class 66 to DCC? How difficult can it be? And welcome back to Flint Hills. I'm Jeff. Now, since the last video where I converted an old Farish 47 to DCC working, I've been contacted by some fellow engaged modelers asking how difficult it is it to convert an old day pole to DCC, uh, especially the class 66. Um, at first sight, I, I could tell this was not going to be easy. Uh, or straightforward conversion because of all the lights in the cab roof. So certainly a bit of rewiring was going to be required. So this is how I did my conversion. So this is the model I'm going to convert. It's the Daypole uh, EWS 66225. And the model number for that is the ND034 class 66. Now, before I do any work on a loco, uh, I like just to make sure it's running fine. So I've put it on the rolling road and given it a real good run in all directions, checked all the lights, make sure they work before we start. So this is the model. And simply unclip the lid. And this is the printed circuit board that's uh, going to be quite tricky. It's only really for... Uh, for DC so it's either way so what I've got to do here is completely strip down everything so I'm going to get rid of all this masking tape that's on the uh, on the loco it came with this this is nothing I've done obviously whoever had it before it was uh, causing problems shorting out Those three pins there are for the lights and the switch on the bottom for night time and daytime running. But I'm going to remove all that and get rid of that. It's not required. So here's the chassis pins. We start to unscrew them. Helps if you get the right screwdriver. There's four of these on each side. I could speed this up, but um, being that a number of people wanted to see how this was done, I've tried to do this in as real time as possible. Sorry there's no sound of me banging everything. I was actually uh, listening to the radio whilst doing it and obviously I can't have that on in the background. So now I want to remove the bogies but normally you can just pull the chassis apart and slide the bogies out. But, uh, didn't want to come. So here what I'm doing is I'm removing the bottom frame, just unclipping it slightly and as soon as I released them they came away. just a couple of pins that hold it not much so that's the frame out I'm 
and now for the motor so none of the components are actually required so the easiest way is just to completely cut all the components off with all these capacitors and not required when for DCC and I'll remove the switch because I'm not going to bother with the switch this time we're just going to have all the lights for running once everything's cut away we can start to pull the frame apart same sort of format as the Farish in the split chassis and then we can get to the put get the motor out now what's interesting is and I've had this before with Depot a lot of the wiring actually gets stuck to the chassis and this is what causes lots of faults and problems so I don't know if it's where it overheats and the wires stick to the chassis and then short out I've uh, certainly had that a lot of that. So there's a split chassis motor, and the one bit I will keep is that metal frame because I'll use that for making some contacts with, and that's all we need to keep for the conversion. Okay, so on the Daypole motor, there's the two contacts. Um, but actually when you do it from above to get to the bottom contact you actually can wire around the frame of the motor so there's a little contact on there to help uh, do that so I'll be wiring around the frame so what I'm going to do is put a little bit of wire on the bottom contact to the uh, to the motor So what I've done here is I've actually soldered a grey wire to the motor contact at the bottom and to the chassis and hopefully there you can see that in a bit more detail. So it's just on the chassis so the power will come around the chassis. And uh, before I start putting it all back I'm just going to clean up the, the motor contacts that are going on the top either side and then we're good to go. So here we are, starting to put them, I've put the motor back into the chassis housing. I've clipped on the bottom connector and uh, you can see I'm just adjusting the mirror and the lights so I can actually see myself. And this can be quite tricky so I'm just going to get the prop shaft off that motor and just angle it down and then take in the bogey, angle that so it's in the right place and then you should be able to just slide that over the top of the prop shaft and then I'll just hold the bogey in place and then I'll just, just open up the split frame of fraction so it then just drops into where the, uh, the catches are and then it should just slide in and hold on the peg there it is and then you can put the screws in and that's the f the bogies on the front so what I'm going to do here is that copper strip that uh, we used before I'm just going to screw the where is a hole. Just put the screw in and screw that to the chassis. And that'll give me a contact point. That's it. So I can now cut that off. Is 
seems a bit thicker than what I thought. Right, there come the pliers. That's it. So we just tighten up the screw, and then you can see the uh, get in focus the copper strip, and I can solder onto that. Now I'm going to do the same on the other side. So the decoder I'm going to use this time around is the old Trainomatic Locomander 2, uh, which is a micro one with wires, which is what is a W on the end. I've had a few of these and I've not had any problems with them. Uh, they're a little bit cheaper than the Zimo and important for me, it does have Railcom. So, um, and there is room to fit this decoder in because it's just a little bit bigger than the, the Zimo one but there's room for it to go. So this is the contact I'm going to use for negative and I have the positive on the other side and I can got the two connections on the motor right in front of me. So fairly straightforward for wiring up the decoder this time round. So that's the track power on. And then we'll get the one to the uh, chassis because obviously the grey is what's going round the chassis and underneath. Always a bit tricky because it's on the actual chassis of the motor, so it takes a little bit more heat to uh, get that on. That's it. And then the orange wire. I've actually put the motor in around the wrong way, uh, which I didn't notice at the time when you're videoing. You typically do that, so I undone that and actually just moved the uh, moved the motor around so it faced the right direction. So uh, yeah, it should be facing the other direction. But there we go. There's the connections. So we'll put the uh, motor on test just to make sure it's all working. And uh, yeah, it's on DC, but it's running fine. So here's the printed circuit board that's actually in the uh, roof of the loco. You can see the black, which is where the white light goes through, and then you've got the red either side. So you've got two white lights and the red in the middle. Another white light down the bottom. The resistors, the two contacts, which have got to go. The three connectors, which have got to go for day and night running. And then we've got the light down the other end, and then we've got the two white lights either side, and again the red light that goes through the middle there, the red LED. So what we've got to do is cut those out. They all pull out nice and simple. So that's what we've got to get out. So here it is. Came out very, very simple. Keep all the bits to one side. And basically I'm going to be cutting that printed circuit board and taking all the wires off it and we'll completely rewire it. It's much simpler to do that. So here's the two ends, the two white lights from either end. So I've cut that printed circuit board and just left those two. And I've de dewired all the lights, uh, all the wires off those LEDs. Basically, all we've got to do is remember the cathode and anode or the positive neg side of those LEDs so you can wire them up. So basically, what I've done here is I fitted a resistor uh, in front of the positive lead to the bottom white light and that's that blue wire because that is where the power comes from so that blue wire goes up to the white and then I then link the yellow so that's the two white lights is on that yellow wire that goes back to the printed circuit board so that's where the yellow wire will connect from the decoder and the blue will decouple from the decoder and then I've simply just gone on with the white wire for the red light and that's just loose at the moment so and I'll then do the same with the other end but the opposite way around using the white so here's both ends now all wired up and you can see I literally did the same process here of looping the blue wires to all the positives of the LEDs the whites to the negative or the yellows to the negative on the other end and then I literally just took up the reds all the way back 
so that will fit nice and simply back in the the uh, in the roof of the loco so effectively the blue the white and the yellow wires was what was on the printed circuit board so here's a shot of the actual wires now all back inside the uh, the roof of the loco so all it remains to do now is to actually just put some tape on that just to hold all the wires neatly in place and uh, same with the, the actual loco itself so here it is a bit of tape on there just to hold it all in place stop anything from shorting out so we put it on flint hills on DCC and there's the white lights so it's working fine and then we turn direction and we get the red lights as well so all working fine so let's give it a run on the layout Well, I hope you found that video helpful on uh, how I converted this Daypole Plus 66. Fortunately, there is plenty of room at the top for the decoder and for all the wires. So uh, it's it's not too bad a conversion to do. Yeah, it's just a bit tricky with the wiring. Anyway, so as I said before, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Take care. Bye for now.